The purpose of Free Thought Forum is to be vigilant to the encroachment of religion into government and to educate the general public as to what a free thinker is. My thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them. No hunter can trap them. No person can deny. No person can deny. Welcome to Free Thought Forum. I'm Catherine Faringer, the producer of this show. I have with me today a co-hostess as well because uh, I wanted to bring a perspective to our subject, which is the spanking of children, the corporal punishment of children. And our distinguished guest is Ronald Ribble. Uh, he is a lecturer and a psychologist, and he comes with lots and lots of of uh, qualifications to speak to this subject, besides being a parent himself. So welcome, Ron. Thank you. And let's just skip all your wonderful letters in front of your name. Some of them are on the screen, and we'll leap right into it. Uh, you sent me something yesterday, which was very interesting, which you wrote about this very subject. Yes. Uh -huh. And right away, I start making little questions here. So um, this uh, subject of uh, punishment has been addressed a number of times lately in the paper. Have you seen all the things on it? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Ooh, yes. And here's, here's one. This is the latest one. I'm, I like this lady a lot. She and I are getting to be email friends. <laughs> but I don't want the paper to know because they might not like her anymore. Well, <laughs> oh, she and I exchange some words over yeah, the internet you do? every now uh -huh. and then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then there well, was... you don't have to pronounce her name. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's much easier to be email friend than in person because of that. And then we hear of corporal punishment, what do they say, still of uh, oh, major and, and debate. Nothing, did, wrong did with that, nothing wrong with that headline at all. No. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, it is still, amazingly enough. Now, I sent you something the other day, and I bet it didn't get there. It was about, it was an article from the New York Times from 1870. Well, it was in here. You didn't get it? No, I didn't. Well, no, I'm sorry. Is, I have to, you're going to my silly machine introduce usually, it to me now. <laughs> well, my yeah. machine usually bounces it back to me and says, this was not deliverable. The person is unknown or something. Mm, Dire I, things are going to happen. I'll to explain me. the problem sometime later. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, you are not coming down one way or another on this, as I gathered from this thing you sent me here. Well, if if you put it in the if you put it in the uh, context of extremes, no. Yeah. Uh, I exactly. don't come down on one yeah. end or the other of this. Well, you're probably familiar with this book, *To Spare the Child*. Spare the Child. Uh, I'm not familiar with the book, but given the title and uh, some of the other words yeah. on the cover, I could guess what well, some of it yes. is. Well, yes. Well, the problem is that. People don't seem to interpret it the way we would, like when you say spank, you mean spank. You're not meaning, you're not talking about belts and belt buckles. Oh, absolutely not, no. Mm. Yeah. Never that. And so on this thing here, what, here's something you said though, despite many theories of latter-day hands-off developmentalists, there is clearly a negative relationship between early but measured spanking. What is measured spanking? Well, measured only means that, that you, you know, if indeed the time arises when you as a parent think you need to do something like that, that, that it is only an event that takes place occasionally, that it is an event in, in which you are not delivering your anger or your rage at the child, that it's measured and thought appropriate at that time. And we could argue all day long about what circumstances yeah. might or might not warrant it. As you looked at the material that I gave you yesterday, you'll notice that what research we've done very recently shows yes. that its most effective use, when it is used, non-abusively, yeah. is in the early time frame. And that, that's not difficult to explain why that's so. Well, you're going to have to do some explaining, because I yeah. can't see. Sally, how do you feel about hitting a two to six year old? That seems to be the time frame well, that they see, ought to be don't, hit. Don't use loaded words now. Don't, don't say hitting them. You know, we're not talking about giving them a back of the hand across the face or using a belt or anything like that. And, and I think, you know, the, the, the difficulty with the extremes here is that one end thinks that if you don't do this, you'll just not be able to raise a proper child. And the other end thinks that you won't raise a proper child if you ever touch them. And I can't set on either extreme because of the results of research and my own experience with this. In other words, it's somewhere in the middle, and we always have to define the spanking as being the flat of the hand mm -hmm. on the seat of the pants, mm -hmm. and that's about it. It's not hitting with belts, 
It's not hitting a kid with the closed fist. It's not smacking them in the face. It's not pulling their hair. It's not doing violence to a child. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is some people are going to say, well, if you touch them at all, it's doing violence. And the question is, is it? Well, and that's the one that each of us has to resolve yeah. on our own. Well, um, Sally, from the perspective of a school teacher, um, how do you feel about corporal punishment in the schools? Well, like, we're not talking two to six here. We're talking right, six. We're, we're talking to older, older middle children, school, surely. Yeah. Middle school kids. Mm -hmm. Well, we did have corporal punishment in my school, and uh, some of the boys preferred that because they would get their licks get and with. get it over with, rather than staying after school or coming in mm -hmm. on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And they were given the choice. But personally, I I find it. I would find it very hard to hit anyone, even with a paddle, because mm -hmm. that's what they used. Mm -hmm. And it looked to me like it hurt. Well, it looks I mean, to me it like, like a very... And I, I don't, uh, I couldn't do that. It looks like an unintelligent it, way to solve a problem. And it well, it may not be unintelligent. Well, and here's another thing. What does it give? It says, well, I can't solve this problem, and the only way I can solve it is to hit someone. Uh, and then the kid thinks, well, I can hit well, again, somebody I'm, else, I'm going to yeah. caution you about this use of the word hit, <laughs> hit. because hit sounds right, like well, a lot of different things. Yeah, well, and that's true. I've got to clean up my language. Paddle is pad, what they do Not even school. paddle. Well, you know, that's what yeah. they yeah. use Because school. paddle yeah. is a wooden paddle yeah. or right. a ruler right. or something so like that, and I don't even go for the ruler on the hands. You good know. for you. Great. Okay. You know. Now we're getting somewhere. Well, let me, let <laughs> me, Actually, let me, you yeah, have now, to define... Uh, yeah, you we have, have to, to define, define what we're... You, you really we're have talking. to define it, and it's a very singular thing. It's like I say, it's the flat of the hand on the yeah. seat of the pants. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you, if you look at the information I gave you, I think the interesting thing is that over the years, the percentage of American adults, parents, who believe in corporal punishment, and will that's spanking in this case, uh, has gone down. It's still, it's still a majority of the parents who think that it's appropriate. It, it's between 60 and 65 percent. Um, if, however, you ask them, you ask parents how many of them spank and at what ages, you find that in the two to six year group in particular, mm -hmm. About 93% of the parents have spanked at some time or another. That doesn't mean they're brutalizing their children by me. Yeah, but yeah. little teeny people, they can't, you said, they can't reason. Well, how can they reason what's been done to them? That would be another difficult thing. Well, they can't say, well, daddy hit me because I reached for that or I was ready to run in the traffic. Well, there you go, something. you're hitting them again. And I get uh, pictures of daddy getting, <laughs> reaching out with his fist and pound that kid well, right in the jaw. to me, job. it's hitting you when an older, yeah. bigger person uh, spanks a smaller <laughs> Look, they're going, to, they're going to be children who are sensitive enough and react yeah. sufficiently emotionally to a subtle threat that you don't ever have to do this. Mm -hmm. But I've seen children for a moment in a setting where reason is not going to do any good, behave in a way that continues until you do something decisive to stop it. And it doesn't mean you have to cripple the kid for heaven's <laughs> sakes, but it does mean that a little smack on the bottom doesn't bad. Yeah. And if they don't get that very yeah. often, it's meaningful to them. Let me tell you, kids between two and six particularly, when they get into school, we're changing we're changing set, but developmentally, they're in what we call the pre-operational stage. They don't develop another person's perspective very much on things. They don't empathize very well with other people. They can go through the motions of empathy and go over to their little mm -hmm. friend and calm them, oh, but yeah. it's more like mimicry that they see from their parents. Mm -hmm. And 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 but but they don't know when you tell them something is right or wrong. Their moral development is such that what determines right or wrong is what happens to you as a consequence. Mm. Reasoning may yeah. seem to work. They may speak back to you in ways that seem to say to you, oh, I understand what you're saying. Mm. But the next minute, go right off and do the very thing you told them not <laughs> to do, you say. So there, there, something needs to be done that's within their context of moral reasoning that they can understand. And, and it may be 
that are swatting the bottom. Yeah. That's what well, they need. Now on the two-year-old thing, I'm still having trouble with that because... Terrible twos. Well, the terrible twos, they're pretty <laughs> terrible. But the thing is, We're the child is beginning to explore the world. Right? Sure, but, but, but you're... So a you're, lot of the things would not be, to my mind, any kind of bad behavior on the part of the child. For instance, reaching for some brick of bra or knick-knack or doodads. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's uh, put them up, mm -hmm. I say. Get rid mm -hmm. of them. Uh, when Steve almost swallowed three little porcelain chickens, I, I had enough <laughs> sense to put, to put them up yeah. where he wouldn't right. get them. You're concerned about <laughs> the chickens. <laughs> but the, the, the problem is, too, that, that if you spank the little two-year-old, mm -hmm. then he's going to turn around and say, well, that's the way I can deal with, with my problems and hit somebody else. Well, it's it, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know of any evidence in the literature and research that suggests that, that children who have been uh, spanked sparingly become brutal. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly there is connection in the research that when a child has been physically abused for a large part of his early life, that yeah, they right. learn to Ooh. relate to others in the same way. Mm -hmm. And that's the way yeah, they well, deal with it. So abuse, it's not surprising then yeah. that abusers have often been abused children themselves. Right. One of the things we find out, it, it's kind of going backwards, but one of the things we find out interesting about punishment, that is if you leave out corporal punishment altogether, you begin to see results that you don't like later on like can significantly more aggression by a child against other children, particularly those pre-adolescent children into the early adolescence. Yeah. Hmm. I, I that, don't think that would follow. That stuns me. Am I a violent person, Sally? Uh, no, I'm not. Never. I didn't get never. Never. No, 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 no. You're going, to, you're going to be a non-scientific person, <laughs> and you're going to do what most people do to my field all the time. It didn't happen to me, therefore it can't happen to anybody. Or no, it did no, happen to me, therefore well, and that's not the case. Yeah. Well, you can't you can't go to the general population from the specific case. Yeah. Well, in these case <coughs> studies, <coughs> this one bothered me a lot. Where do you have your paper with the thing yes. I marked mine? And the Swedish study. Yes, that's okay because <coughs> I don't me. understand those figures. I've mm. never been good at numbers, but I mean well. the six hundred and something something. What was that? Um, Mm. Um, yeah, that's, this yeah. is it right here. You want me to go um, on on that? Yeah, See? well, explain that to me. Uh, this, well, our Scandinavian brothers are probably the most um, progressive folks in the face of the earth. They, they do yeah. so many things. Well, they pay for their progressiveness, too. Oh, yeah. You know, about 40% of their income for well, so many we're, things. We're up to that almost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> George is trying to solve that. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, they did, back in 79, they allowed and enacted a law that basically eliminated uh, or made illegal or criminal any kind of corporal punishment, including spanking. And so of interest to us since then has been, you know, what was it like before? And what has it been like since, especially with that group most affected in that early age group that was growing up? What happened to that group? where the spanking was eliminated as a legal means of in-family, shall we say, punishment. Well, what, what uh, our retrospective studies show, which means we went to, in 1981, to mm -hmm. Swiss families and, I mean, Swedish families and Swedish children and said, you know, how many of you uh, were uh, spanked or what was the abuse rate? in abuse, where now we're talking about other than spanking, how many of you were abused beforehand? The rate of abuse that came up in these surveys was 21% of our rate here in the United States. In other words, the Swedish rate prior to the enactment of the law was about one-fifth our rate of child abuse in this country mm -hmm. with the records at that time. Afterwards, Afterwards, when they began to follow these people that they were then affected by the Swedish law, they found that in the years following, the Swedish rate rose to 149% of the U.S. rate. 149%. That means that the actual abuse in Swedish families went up rather than down after this enactment. As though, you know, maybe, I mean, there's all sorts of ways you could explain it, but that's the data. Uh, particularly notable, and that, that's this case, and I think this is the interesting part because I'll yeah, bring the United States understand. experience in here. 
was the fact that the assault and aggression by miners on miners in Sweden rose by 672 percent. Well, that's what just boggled my mind. I just well, what can't years take... were these? Well, when we're talking about miners on miners, we'll be talking about children from about say eight years of age on up to about 16. No, I meant like, was it in the 70s or the 80s? Oh no, this would be in the 80s, in the 80s, 80s, yes. Because we saw a change in, in the way people act, uh, including adults, not just children. Mm -hmm. in, yeah. It kind of started declining in the 60s and it just kept getting, it kept getting worse. Getting worse and worse. Yeah, behavior. so I think uh, the behavior of Like the of idiot that parked in front of my bad. mailbox. Now you know you don't block mailboxes. I'm bringing that up just to show well, if you, you what if you get it, If you get into the whole subject of aggression, yeah, which would yeah. be another program, yeah, right. <laughs> At least you, you, what you're going to find is that yes, um, there has been an increase in aggression. Yes, study shows that watching violence on TV as a steady diet between 8 and 18 years of age results in increased aggression past mm -hmm. 18 years of age. But what we also know, friends, just had a program on TV here recently, just the last week, um, maybe the last week and a half, where they were looking at daycare children. Yes, I said Daycare children mm -hmm. who were becoming more aggressive and, and less obedient at home when they spent extraordinary amount of time yeah. in daycare, where in fact, in any decent daycare, you're not going to lay a finger on the child and you're going to be very circumspect of what, what you say no to that child about. In other words, no curbs, no limits seems in the case of both Sweden and daycare to suggest that the children become more aggressive. But how could they run a daycare without having some limits? Well, they do have way. some they limits, but be. I'm telling you that yeah. you, that that your limits We're, are pretty much pretty much kept to those things that people who say no corporal punishment would say. You do tell them yeah. no, no. Well, you start, but you find that the kids become more more aggressive with each other the more time they spend in daycare. Maybe that's because they're just all put together there. You know, I think one of the things, I'm, I'm very much an evolutionist. This will start to really raise some hackles. You oh, know. No, we, we, I'm we, very we much like an that. evolutionist. We agree with that. And, like and, that and if you want to hear my good speech that I'm going to give in Washington in August, it's okay. going to be about the remains of yesterday and homo, homo sapiens in, in the year 2001. And one of my primary theses is that while we look great, and we doll up wonderfully and look very sophisticated, we're still working with a 50 to 75,000 year old brain that hasn't evolved very much except for what we know about the world. Mm -hmm. And the instincts and impulses which are in there are very much those same primitive instincts and impulses that were in there years ago. Aggression is a very natural thing for human beings. We like to cloak ourselves in the cloak of sweetness and niceness mm -hmm. But we're an animal, just like the other animals. That's and in the fact, goodness. those other animals really behave better than we do. Yes, they do. We're the only species outside of our chimpanzee brothers, with whom we share 99% of our gene pool. Look at us. Well, <laughs> uh, keep it up. Keep it up. You know, how to make it uh, and they're very aggressive with each other. Uh -huh. They get very mean. Yeah. Well, do you think um, Sally and I were discussing population, which is just getting out of hand, mm -hmm. and the fact that there are more pressures today. You, there's more more people everywhere you go. It's very annoying, and people are space. They don't like people to intrude on their space. Now, would that would that factor in here somewhere on this uh, more aggressive thing? We we just flat are getting more aggressive. All of us. Well, our our, our ability to put up with what the environment deals us, including crowding, has a lot to do with our temperament. And unfortunately, we don't all have the same temperament. There are growing numbers of people, if you get into personality, who, who are more on the low aroused end, are more the extrovert, are more the sensation yeah. seeker, and they can take almost anything. Uh -huh. In fact, it takes a lot to make them feel good. Uh, yeah, where well, if, yeah. if you're like me, I'm at the other end of the spectrum. Uh -huh. Whatever my sociability traits are, I'm still very much an introvert. My instincts are to get away from it all, not mm -hmm. be bothered by mm -hmm. people. Now, crowding for me is 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 something that arouses me, and thus for is make therefore is more likely to make me aggressive yes. if I get yeah, bothered. I, right. I don't uh, like crowds either. You know, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it's really a matter of yes, we're getting more crowded. We are adapting, in a sense, evolutionary-wise, with more people who are, 
who, who are capable of dealing with that, but there's a lot of us throwbacks to the old yeah. days when we lived right. in very sparse settlements, uh, and, and simply, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pressed by the stimuli of today, the things that go on around us. You know. mm -hmm. um, so you don't think, I just can't understand that, 672%, I mean, good golly. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there are lots of different theories about aggression. And um, uh, both uh, Lorenz, uh, the ethologist, and Freud agreed that um, catharsis was necessary for what was a natural tendency in human beings to be aggressive. They disagreed about why we were aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, but they did think that catharsis, where actually catharsis doesn't work very well. In other words, if I'm angry at you, yeah then the only really sure way of my getting rid of that anger and aggression is take it out on you, you know, punch you yeah. out. See? No, Does that make you feel better? Kick the dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you kick the dog, it, it'll only work if you know that the dog was really precious to her. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, aggression is a tremendously interesting thing in us, and I think the thing that we don't want to we won't want to deal with is that we are as aggressive as we are, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what it bodes for our future, and, you know, because we're, we're, growing, we're growing exponentially on this earth. Yes. You know, and there are limited resources here, and that's going to give rise to reasons yes. for aggression as time goes along. Mm -hmm. When our president says he doesn't want to diminish our blessed American way of life by telling people to cut down their use of gas and UVs, that's a mistake. <laughs> we all have an entitlement to what this earth has, earth has not just yes. Americans. So, I mean, yeah, aggression is not going to cease being. It's going to become, in my mind, a bigger and bigger problem as time goes along. But this because of overpopulation? Overpopulation, crowding, misunderstanding ourselves not knowing how to deal with it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Well, these Swedish, I, I'm obsessed with Swedish people now, <laughs> and they blame all this increased aggression on the fact that they passed a law saying you shouldn't spank small children. And anyway, if you sent your child to daycare, would you want somebody else deciding when that kid needed a pop on the butt? Would you, Sally? Mm -hmm. I no. think I'd be no. very fussy about that, and right. I'd be very damn mad well, if like I found this. somebody's the school that I taught in, uh, the parents had to give permission mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. for their children to have to get corporal punishment. I don't know. It still seems and so. If I were the parent, I would say no. Uh -huh. I just think yeah. it's. I think you have well, to. I think you have to know your children in that case. I think that well, you know. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, you know, there's this mar marine thing. This what? What am I trying to say? The boot camp. Thing. Yeah, yeah. The, everybody seems to think that this the, marine mentality is going to solve out. everything. Send them out there. Watch out. There. And shave Watch their out. heads. Yeah, <laughs> shave their heads and treat them mean. And they're going to be so sweet and darling when they get. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I think probably what's wrong already is the fact they've never been able to been uh, help to to focus their outlook on creativity for one thing. I just think that that more money should be spent on the arts. I just truly believe that developing that in Don't early years yes, and creativity yes, no. will take a lot away from all mm -hmm. of this other stuff. Because um, we all in you know can enjoy that yes. and for years to come, uh, our people that come after us will enjoy art. And or should, <laughs> and uh, if they're not too and yet if you each spend, I mean, we'll always have poor people, so you can mm. just pour money down the drain on that. Well, no, I'd be careful about that. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. these yeah. hypotheses have a way of being uh, self-fulfilling. You know, we'll always have poor people. Well, well Jesus said, we yeah. probably will always have relatively poor people, but not Jesus always. Jesus said, poor "The no. poor we will have with us always." That's what he said. And speaking of and Jesus, I don't know how he meant that. <laughs> he and Nostradamus, I think, neither one are great predictors. <laughs> <laughs> what about this uh, 
a, a church in Atlanta where they were spanking these teenagers. I mean, beating them, really. Yeah, well, some of our fundamentalist friends believe that, you know, they take that sparing the rod and spoiling the child seriously. So they don't mm -hmm. spare it, they multiply it and, yeah, and beat it every opportunity. But that's, that's no good either. Nobody's no, ever going to sit here. I think they were getting some enjoyment yeah, out yeah. of that. I they get to you. be kind of, yeah. Oh, there's a new study. I don't know, Ron. I've got to send you some stuff. By the, you've got to give me your email. Oh, I bet there's tons because of stuff out there. Because there's oh, a really yes. interesting thing about sexuality and spanking. Sexuality and yes, spanking. Yes, indeed. Oh, boy, this mm -hmm. introduces a new ring. <laughs> yes, it does. That's well, another program. Yes. Uh, well, we'll bring that up next time then, but I'm going to have to send you some homework on it. Yeah, and, 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 and as a psychologist and having read different things, I can see this going in all kinds of directions. <laughs> But I thought that was a, a, a new, it's, as you say, yeah. a new wrinkle in this whole thing. Uh, but I've always felt that it was wrong. I, it, you say, don't ever do it in anger. Oh. So you, then you've got to be kind of cold-blooded and say, all right, I'm going to spank you. Spank, spank. And then the kid cries, oh. and then you cuddle him and say, oh. but I love you, and I did that because I love you. Isn't My, this sadomasochistic? I, 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 I isn't think, this sowing the seeds of sadomasochism? Gee, gee, since we're so complex, we ought to be able to deal with that. My, my mom, I, I think I put that in my notes, my mom paddled me once or twice oh, with yeah. her hand. Yeah. Uh, she was the most gentle woman. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think she ever did it with her heart in it. Yeah. Uh, but only because at the moment, I, and I was a sensitive kid to begin with. You didn't yeah. have to say a lot. Well, to that's me. me. I was, yeah. I was overly, a hard overly. overly. all I needed. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I needed something the other direction to keep me from being such an introverted... Whip. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But anyway, I just wanted to read, and I, I thought this was interesting. Sure. In, in this, uh, this is the problem, as he defines it. This is Philip Grevin mm -hmm. in Spare the Child. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. And he says... Billy was always full of pranks. Sometimes he carried things a bit too far and came off, and then off came his father's belt. Mr. Graham never punished in anger or desperation, but when he did see the necessity for correction, I winced. At, at such times I had to remind myself of another proverb, withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Proverbs 23, 13. More than once I wiped tears from my eyes and turned my head so the children wouldn't see. But I always stood behind my husband when he administered discipline. See, they get confused between discipline and punishment. I knew that he was doing what was biblically correct and the children didn't die, exclamation point. Mrs. Morrow Graham, mother of Reverend Billy Graham. <laughs> now, isn't that delightful? Now, what I ever? Yes, your childhood sounded more like the one my husband describes. I mean, there were four kids, and uh, his father was a minister, and his mother was, uh, yeah, you know, he was kind of off doing ministerial things, you know. Uh, a lot of it was on the golf course. Mm -hmm. And so his mother had to deal with the four kids, and, and he, it sounded more like the Keystone Cops at his place, because he said she would get so mad at him. He was the mischief maker. And she would run after him, and then they would both end up just howling with laughter, and just nothing ever came of it. Wow. So. Did, did sometimes the mischief majors are annoying but delightful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's yes, a big there difference in that, let's say, the, the boy that lives close to me who is destined to have some real problems and needs a real firm hand, a product of a, of, of a divorce, yeah. you know, uh, where he may need some firmer direction. Um, can sure. I mention one thing that relates yeah. to this? Sure, we have time? and quickly. Uh, you know, there, there was a, um, an, a piece on TV here last week that had to do with uh, private schooling Mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, where the state does not require that, um, that there be oh. any uh, meeting of state um, standards. Yeah. And, and I'll tell so, you more about that sometime. I okay. guess you'll yeah. have to. Yeah. 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 Well, you'll yeah. have to tune in again next time for Free Thought Forum, and we'll have Ron Ripple back. And you can finish what you were about to say. What a pity it went so well, fast. Well, tell us now. Yeah. Well, this was the most interesting. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to Duke or Dictator. No person can.